Adding support for OpenAPI allows us to do more than just generate documentation. We can even generate Web API clients as well. Let me show you how. Before we actually start generating Web API clients, there's a couple of changes we need to make first. Notice for all our recipe operations, none of them actually have any names. So if we generate a Web API client, what is it going to call these things? Let's see how we can add these inside of Visual Studio. Inside of my startup.cs file, I want to head down to that configure services method. And inside of that call to add Swagger Gen, notice on line 57, I've added a call to an operation called custom operation IDs. And what this is going to do is assign operation names based on the name of the actual action method. Now I need to make one more change inside of my configure method. Inside of the call to use Swagger UI, I need to call a function named display operation ID. So with this being said, I should now have operation IDs being shown on the UI and also generated in the open API document. If I head back over to the browser, notice here on the right side, I have all these operation IDs that are defined for me. Now let's go back to Visual Studio. I went ahead and created an extra project, and this is just an empty console application, and there's no code in it right now. I want to use that generated Swagger document to generate an API that I could use inside of this project. I'm going to use that generated open API doc to generate a web API client that I could use inside of this project. First thing I'll do, I'll go to project and then I'll add connected service. Now here under service references, I'll click add, I'll select open API. I hit URL, but now I have to paste in the address of that swagger doc. But you remember where we can get that. That's right here underneath the name of our project. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it inside of Visual Studio. Next, we need to give it a namespace. I'm just going to call this recipes API client. Now I'll hit finish and it's going to install some NuGet packages for me. And now I should be able to access that generating client inside of my project. So let's add a using statement and include that recipe client namespace. And now I should be able to access a client and I believe it's called swagger client. Notice that the Swagger client needs an instance of HTTP client as well as a base URL. Well, let's get the base URL from our Swagger UI. So I'm going to copy this part. I'll paste it in and that'll be a base URI. Now I need to create an instance of HTTP client. So I'll just quickly new up a new instance of HTTP client and I'll pass that into this constructor. Now using that client, I should have access to all of those API operations. So if you take a look here, notice I have create recipe, delete recipe, read recipe, update recipe, and all of these operation names are based on the operation IDs that were generated inside of that open API spec. Let's do a get recipes call. And you can see it accepts that count parameter. I'm going to say I want about 10 of them. Now I'm going to specify the results. And now why don't we go ahead and loop over these results? So I'll do a for each. item and results. And now I'm just going to console write line out all the those recipes. I'll do item dot. And I'll just print out the title. Now let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to select the console project. I'm going to hit debug and start without debugging. And here inside of this console window, you can see the titles of 10 random recipes returned from my API client. Hopefully you see now how a well-formed open API document can not only help us debug and document our web APIs, but can also help us generate API clients. Now we can take all of this code and package it up in a NuGet package so different folks all around the world can start using our APIs so much easier inside of .NET.